I'm going to riff a little bit more because I'm feeling good. And I'm going to be talking about how uh, I've been touched. Everyone I know knows I've been touched. They're just not sure about what. And on that note, since we're talking about it, haven't done marijuana for over three weeks. Haven't done Kratom for over two months. So when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, I don't want to be second guessing myself and my perception of my experiences. That and I know I need to be healthy. <clears throat> Joining God's army might not be a joke. And on that note, I've heard that when Jesus comes back, and I think that's a misnomer, I think he's already back. It ain't going to be like the first time. He ain't going to be coming and showing us how to live a righteous life and turn the other cheek and die for our sins. He's going to be coming back. And according to Islam, Jesus Christ leads the armies of the righteous against the armies of the wicked. So it might serve logic and reason. And I keep using these words because I don't want to use absolutes and talk like I know anything. But it would serve to reason that he might not be coming back in the same human form. See, if God took a human flesh body to show us the way, sent his son, to take a human flesh form and this time when he comes back it ain't gonna be like the first time yeah he might be coming back in the flesh but it might not be a single dude in a human body what so we can hang him up on the cross again <clears throat> so uh, side note but not really I included links in the last description and in this one lizard people are real they've showed us the skeletons They've been inculcating us with this, introducing us to this idea, slowly conditioning us to the acceptance of this reality that lizard people are real. I've included two links to two different videos where they show you multiple skeletons of these, and scientists are doing the, the CAT scans and the x-rays and showing you that they are exactly what you saw in the movie E.T. The head, exactly like E.T. The three long spindly fingers, and she keeps referring to the physiological features of this being as being that of reptiles, including the ribs that go clear down to the pelvis, and she refers to a snake that has ribs that go clear along the spine. <clears throat> the skin, she even shows you some skin, patch of skin that looks pretty reptilian or amphibian to me. And that they have eggs, even a little 18 inch tall looking one. One of the bodies they show you, the guy says it's about my size. Another one, you can see it's only about 18 inches tall, maybe two feet. And they throw it on the x-ray and you can see eggs in it, big eggs. Well, legend and folklore has it that there's like seven foot tall egg-laying reptilian beings. But what I wanted to talk about, a bunch of stuff, I'm going to just jump around. And I might have to hit pause a couple times to let the next thing come. But one of the things I think... Uh, God likes about me being a transceiver that I receive and transmit as a biological antenna that we are. And that I try not to be too certain about what I think I know and interpret and translate it and just tell you my experiences. So on that note, there's one particular subscriber who I'm going to recap some stuff for. So if this seems like I'm rehashing old stuff, it ain't to be going over old stuff. I don't, I haven't even watched most of the videos from my trip to Missouri. But a couple weeks after I found my micro, a couple days after I found my microchip, went over to my sister and said, I suspect you got one in the same place. For sure, she does. It's not as close to the surface. You can't feel the shape of it. But it's definitely there. <clears throat> Before I go into that, I'm going to just say I've been touched. And most people are probably a little afraid, a little, yeah, but by what? And touched is a euphemism in the baby boomer dialect, oh, that guy's a little touched, you know what I mean? It's a euphemism for crazy or mentally ill or emotionally unstable or something to that effect. But then you got this <clears throat> TV series called Touched by an Angel, and that's a good thing. Oh, the angels are singing and everything else, right? So I think everyone knows me, <clears throat> knows I've been touched. They're just not sure by what. And if you're still sitting on the sidelines, afraid to jump into the arena, because you've lived your whole life as if, you know, maybe there is or isn't spirit, but I'm going to sit on the sidelines. You're already as far down the wrong road as you can possibly be. You're a devotee of the church of no church. 
you are touched by the spirit of no spirit. The world of psychology that's blinded me with science has convinced you to just uh, kind of sit it out as far as spirituality goes and believe that as long as you don't get involved that you're not influenced by spirit. You're influenced by the spirit of no spirit that's convinced you that there is no such thing. That's as far down the wrong road as you could possibly be and you're going down with the ship. Those who are lukewarm get spit out. So to be afraid to dabble in the spirit as long as you're trying to be a good spirit, a good person and not wearing the boff mat on your shirt and dedicating your life to Satan and saying I'm evil and proud of it. <clears throat> Jump in the arena. It's now or never. <clears throat> I should blow my nose. <laughs> so, don't be afraid of what spirit I've been touched by. Is it an angel or a demon? Is it God or the devil? Is it the good God or the bad God or somewhere in between? Is it the V2K technology voice of God talking to you through that microchip in your How do you know you don't have one? On that note, I found mine. A couple days later, I went to my sister, and sure enough, she got one. A couple weeks later, I went to my girlfriend Amber's house, who I hadn't seen for, oh, I don't know, a year or two. We'd been broke up for a while, but we'd been on and off girlfriend boyfriend since we were 18. I'm now 39. She's 38. So I figured this is relevant enough that it doesn't matter if she's got another boyfriend or any of that other stuff. And any of our past history is kind of like a minuscule, minutia, minute details compared to this, which is a revelation that changes everything. So I thought I'd share it with her. And I went over to her house. And after I had spoken and shown and tell and did a show and tell for after about three hours and I was all but pretty much out of things to say, I mentioned we all have this ridge in our ear. Click, 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 click. It's where the skin of your ear comes in right here and there's a little ridge. Everyone's got that ridge right there and behind it there's a small cavity. And it's beneath that cavity that I have a cylindrical shape object that I've got an x-ray of <clears throat> that I've placed in previous videos. At the time I hadn't gotten an x-ray yet, but when I went over to show and tell her what I'd discovered, I went on for about three hours before I reached out to show her where that cavity is and she suddenly blurts out, oh, I got something there too. She's known about it her whole life and she has one behind each ear. In fact, she, I think she has two behind one ear and one behind the other. Hers are a different shape. They feel like the shape of a needle with a head on it, a round head, not a flat head. <clears throat> For all I, I don't know where she got hers, and neither does she. But she's known about them her whole life. And she's going to be one of those peaceful people, probably already kicking herself, gnashing her teeth and wailing, realizing how close God was to her the whole time. This is the God of synchronicity and coincidence. People always try to minimize, normalize, and forget about it. So they might want to dismiss my whole experience as a mental breakdown, a psychological breakdown after having discovered that. Okay, what about my sister? Compare and contrast that to her experience or my lifelong girlfriend. You can say, okay, so you and your sister were born on an airbase and you're both part of some black ops uh, government experiment and uh, chalk it up to that. How do you explain the coincidence that my lifelong girlfriend on and off also has implants behind her ears, but she never told me? Even though I was a conspiracy theorist and a truther and into all that stuff, maybe she was afraid that she'd be rejected and alienated because, oh, that's too weird. Uh, I don't think I want to be around you no more. Truth is, if at any time in her life she would have opened up and been honest, I would have reached, whoa, that's, that's weird. I remember now, after she told me, that sometimes she would go, oh, I have sensitive ears. Oh, that hurts. I have sensitive ears. And I never noticed. But if at any time in our lives she would have just opened up and told me, I would have went, wow, that's too weird. I wonder if I have them. What, what the hell is this? And we would have been lifelong microchip buddies, right? She would have had someone to confide in. But no. Even after I went over and told her and showed her about mine, she wasn't going to say nothing. Until I reached out and at that very second she blurted out, oh, I, I got something there too. She was going to let me leave and never mention it. I'll bet she wishes, if not now, she will come to the realization that she had opportunity upon opportunity. <clears throat>
Because even when I went back to her house on, on the day I left to Missouri, showing her what I recorded in the sky on the way over to her house, and she's the one that pointed out the black dots in the sky and said, what are those black dots? And later on, I zoomed in and contrasted them out, and it's titled Plasma Powered Thunderbirds. She still wanted to go into this, you owe me an apology, I'm a victim, my hurt feelings, and that's more important than all this reality going on around us. And I told her, look, your feelings don't matter anymore. And I left wondering if I had done the wrong thing. <clears throat> no. She tried to lure me back into that same mind trap that you need to feel bad about yourself and apologize to me and I'm the victim here of circumstance and I just had enough. Nope, I'm done with that shit. Your feelings don't matter anymore. I'm here to talk about the reality, what's happening around us, and you want to... Well, well and once we talk about my feelings and cover all that stuff, and then maybe we can talk about well, what matters to you seems to matter so much, and what matters to me doesn't matter. And no, no, no. This ain't about your feelings or your perception of uh, how I did something wrong and I owe you an apology and I need to fix your hurt feelings. We're not doing that anymore. That's the mind trap she had me in that I discussed on my last video. And right up until the end, I gave her chance after chance after chance, and it is no coincidence. We're talking about the God of synchronicity and coincidence that's been working throughout our whole lives. And that's what I tapped into at 19 and realized. When I'd think a thought and see a bus go by with a sign on it that, like, coincided with my thoughts, and it's like, whoa, that's too weird. <clears throat> and once you start to tap into it and realize it, you see it everywhere. Well... You can minimize and normalize and say, well, you've been touched by a mental breakdown and psychologists could describe that and explain it to you. How do you explain the fact that her and I came into each other's realm of existence for so long and she had the chance to confide in somebody and if she would have at any time, that's probably when I would have found mine was when she showed me hers. But even after I found mine, went over and showed her mine, she still wasn't going to show me hers. That's God. <laughs> Works in mysterious ways. So, I also want to talk a little bit about uh, sigil magic. You remember that guy, Nagimoto or whatever, who flash froze the water and showed that you just put a label on the side of it, a word, love, compassion, forgiveness. And the water freezes in these beautiful crystalline shapes and you put other words on it like hate, you're ugly, you suck. And it freezes into these ugly, deformed patterns that are not symmetrical and geometric. Or playing music next to it. It's all vibratory frequency. Sigil magic is vibratory frequency. Would you want to drink out of this cup? You notice all of the designs are actually made out of this metallic, something like an antenna. It says the walking dead. It's got a hand there reaching up, trying to get out of the, uh, you know, FEMA camp. <clears throat> Not sure if I even believe or know anything more about that than vibratory frequency is the nature of our reality. Whether you're talking about the Schumann cavity resonance, or high frequency and low magnetics, or the fact that we are electric beings, EKG meters can read your brain waves, and they also read your heart waves. There is a knowing of the heart, Shante Ishta. So just to play it on the safe side, I quit drinking out of this thing. <clears throat> on the same note, let's talk about food prices going up. To assume the bishop will feed you because he's fulfilled your food orders in the past is probably not a good assumption. Right now, there's probably a social stigma of people who need and ask for food from the bishop's warehouse. During times of bounty and harvest, when summertime and the living's easy, it's probably a little bit of a stigma like collecting food stamps when you ask the bishop for food from the bishop's warehouse. <clears throat> but when the price of food doubles and or triples and or and or, the number of people requesting food orders is going to exponentially increase. So right now you ask for a food order that's the ask of one food order. But when the price doubles, and then the number of people in the neighborhood goes up by double or triple or 10x, you're asking 20 or 30 times the ask per every one food order that you ask. And the social stigma will flip. 
because when the people that have been putting in their 10% and sending their kids out to the field to help, you know, Gibby, you know, farmer Gibby pick his crops or plant his crops and make light work with many hands, know that we're the ones that put that food there. Or the people that took, you know, the extra crop that they had and get, took it to the cannery and said, here, throw this in some cans, I got some beans, I got some corn. They know. When the time comes, that's what we prepared this for. And when prices double or triple, if you're still buying off of the shelves at Walmart or wherever, there's going to be a stigma there too. Just like people that go to church and don't take the sacrament because they know they haven't been living a righteous life, so they just pass it along and say no thanks. Because they're told you're not supposed to unless you've been living a righteous and holy life. So it'll be just like passing the sacrament along and not taking any. If you're still buying off the food, the food off the shelves at Walmart, when everyone else. And it'll happen rapidly. When you find out that the Joneses over there, when they got a nice SUV, even though people that have a million dollars in the bank account, they're going to start taking from the Bishop's Warehouse instead of Walmart. <clears throat> when you find out your neighbors over there that have plenty of money are getting food from the Bishop's Warehouse, and so are your neighbors over there, and you go to church and they say, ain't no shame in your game. There is no social stigma attached to it anymore. Get your food from the Bishop's Warehouse. These are the times we prepared for. It is going to be those people who are still shopping at Walmart who are looked down upon like, what, don't you feel worthy? Have you not been participating or contributing? Why are you still buying food off the shelf at Walmart? And if you are to believe in sigil magic, look on your dollar bill and tell me you don't believe in sigil magic. Look again at that experiment with uh, Dr. Nagimoto or whatever he is and uh, the freezing of the water and how just a little bit of vibratory frequency changes the nature of it. Disintegrates the molecules when you put it in the microwave. That's science. Now think about the food you're buying off the shelf at Walmart and the food that's been blessed going into cans at the cannery and why aren't you already eating from the Bishop's Warehouse? and instead buying that stuff off the shelf that's got all those labels on it and has been <clears throat> blessed by some other sigil magic. Just to be on the safe side, even though you're not sure about the ups and downs and ins and outs of that, probably safe to say, with all the fluoride and all the other stuff they put in the air and the water, it's like buying microwaved food right off the shelf. Right? It's not an accident. There is an intentional disintegration and uh, deterioration of the food and the water and the air. <clears throat> so, just a word to the wise. If you think because the bishops filled you some food orders in the past that he's going to continue to, when the price doubles and triples and quadruples, and the number of people increases by 10, maybe a hundred fold, because it's no, when it starts to be just the people that are supplementing their income, because now food's twice as much, and then it becomes the Joneses who have a couple of cars and a Beamer and an SUV, but they know, I could save a car payment and put that towards my kid's education or inheritance. What am I doing buying this food off the shelf at triple the price? These are the times we prepared for. And those guys down the block are doing it, and so are those guys. And I talk to them at church, and there's no more shame in your game. There's no more social stigma attached to receiving food from the bishop. It's, in fact, the opposite. Those who are still buying off the shelf are the people that haven't been participating and contributing or don't feel worthy to take of that sacrament. Well, <clears throat> that's when some people are going to have to make some hard decisions on who gets it and who don't. And just because you got it in the past, <clears throat> doesn't mean you're going to get it in the future. So, hold that thought. The bees disappeared this year. I'll do a video out in the yard tomorrow, because it's dark now. Our apple trees, one of them didn't produce any apples. And every year it's produced a massive amount of apples that always fall to the ground. And I remember hearing Doug say, I'm, I want to take those apple trees out so I don't have to clean up all the apples off the ground anymore. One of them didn't produce any apples. The other one has the bark falling off. <clears throat> Our telephone pole out front has that burnt side on it. The electromagnetic frequencies, whatever it is, the 
plasma, they're all, if you go down the road and look at all the phone poles going down the road, they're all burnt on the south side. Like they received a blast on that side. <coughs> the bees, as I've described previously, are probably suffering from the electromagnetic frequencies. And that's why they can't fly or levitate. So, when in the same year, yeah, we've heard about decreasing bee colonies, colony collapse disorder, and all that. This year, they disappeared. Period. In the same year, we said, and it was predicted, predictive programming in those history channel specials called Life After Humans, where they show the vines taking over the uh, Golden Gate Bridge within a couple years after the humans are gone. And a few more years later, all the buildings start to collapse and crumble. <clears throat> They told us that when the bees disappear, it's only a couple of years later that the humans disappear because there goes your food and the only thing you'll be able to eat is wind-blown crops like corn, wheat, beans, soy. Our grapes, one of them didn't produce. We've got two vines of grapes out there. One of them did not produce any grapes. I will show you this tomorrow. We've got two apple trees. One of them did not produce any apples because they are not being pollinated by the bees. One of the trees has all of its bark falling off. That is what happens to trees when you put a cell tower by them. It is the electromagnetic frequencies that interfere with the phototropism, which is the ability of the plant to inflate and deflate its cells with waters. When it's young, it needs to lean towards the sun and follow it throughout the day, open and close its leaves in the morning. Flowers open up in the day and close up at night. That's their phototropism, the ability to inflate and deflate their cells with water to lean and follow the sun, to open and close their leaves. And when you hit them with the electromagnetic frequencies, that's why the bark falls off. It's happened a lot for a long time when you put a new cell tower in next to some trees. Now, those trees have been there for a lot of uh, 20, 30 years, whatever it's been. And every year they've put off a lot of apples. One of them didn't put off any apples. It has three on the back side. That's it. The other one <clears throat> that does have some apples on it has the bark falling off. Fourteen states are now underwater. And those are the main states where we grow all the wind-blown, wind-pollinated crops. And they've been waiting for the water to recede so they could plant. And at best, they'll be able to plant like the shortest duration seed like 60 90 and 120 day seed if you get it in the ground early you can plant 120 day seed that takes that long to grow and produces a high yield the longer and longer you wait you have to produce put in the 90 day seed and then if you're lucky now we'll maybe get 60 day seed that produces within 60 days but it produces a low yield expect food prices to rise and do not expect to receive them from those who have been diligently preparing for this time unless you've been participating in a local community economy where the butcher the baker and the candlestick maker go to a farmers market to develop social networks that do not just exist online and contribute to a local economy and engage in that community spirit of entrepreneurship or don't so back to getting into the arena of spirituality. If you want to be a good person, something as simple as, you know, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. I've been praying to the God of synchronicity and coincidence since I started discovering there's more than meets the eye going on here. And, uh, don't be afraid to get in the arena because you're already as far down the wrong road as you can possibly be and you're going down with the ship if you're still lukewarm and think that you're not influenced by spirit because you chose not to participate. You're just under the spirit of no spirit. You're a devotee of the church of no church. Because if a wretch like me can receive a grace card, then so can you. I'm no saint. And that's why I say everyone who knows me knows I've been touched. And that it's probably a good thing I didn't discover this any earlier. Like all those years that Amber could have showed me hers, and I would have probably discovered mine. Because previously I would have probably sought justice 
in some earthly court, <clears throat> but it's pretty clear now. The judge is here. On the day of the Notre Dame Cathedral, I put up a video that says, Judgment Day has begun, and it's not a one-day event. On that same day, I zoomed in and contrasted on the serpent that sits on top of the portal of the cathedral. And in another frame, it's flying over here with wings. And in that portal, I zoomed in through two different layers of darkness. How does that make any sense? Why does not that light shine up through each of those layers of darkness? How can there be two layers of darkness? And I did a screenshot slideshow that takes you down, in, and through. And that was when I first discovered what I called the Mantelbrot. Not the Mantelbrot set, the uh, Flower of Life or the Cube of Metatron. I don't know if that's what they are. But I've seen that same pattern repeated in multiple other screenshot slideshows that I've created. So, don't be afraid to get involved. And don't think, well, I've sat on the sidelines my whole life and I wouldn't know what way's up or down and I'm not into spirituality, so I probably shouldn't uh, stick my foot in the water now. I've already said people who are not indoctrinated and attached to a specific dogma and ideology are going to have an easier time going through this. Because people who thought they knew everything and are expecting to see Jesus in this form or that form or in a singular person or being or in a specific form, it's about the function, not the form. And this time his function is going to be very different than the last time, or at least that's what I hear. So it would serve to reason that his form may be very different than last time, and even maybe not in a singular human, and that they've already arrived. <clears throat> and it was occurring to me the other day, maybe the rapture already happened, and we're stuck with all the crappy people. Because they said, or from what I understand, that the rapture would happen like a thief in the night. That just means that those who are sleeping and aren't woke are going to wake up one day to find all the good people are gone. Well, it seems like if you look around, we might already be in that world. But just as Judgment Day has already begun, and it's not a one-day event, maybe the rapture isn't one day either. Because it would be easier to pull off without anyone noticing, like a thief in the night, if you did it slowly and incrementally, and a few people here, and a few people there, and by the time everyone else wakes up, they look around, and they've been sleeping and intentionally, willfully ignoring what's going on around them. So for a lot of people, if you don't see what's going on around us right now, it's because you're not looking, and it's because you're afraid to look. But if you do see what's going on around us, and you're a little bit apprehensive and uh, intimidated, that's okay, that's to be expected. Even I still have my moments, like I said last night. <clears throat> he was there when Jeff was tempted and nearly lost his faith. Doo doo! Hope you guessed his name. And if you're still sitting on the sidelines, it's either because you're not looking and not seeing what's going on around us, or you're afraid. Now the people who are watching this channel, they see what's going on around us. They're not afraid to look, but they may still be a little bit apprehensive to sign on to any team and uncertain if they get touched by a spirit. It might be a demon. It might be an imposter. The imposter is the one who fooled us that there is no such thing. It's like the parents left the house, and I've probably used this analogy before, but I made it up myself, so I'll repeat it, <clears throat> and went on vacation, and they got kids they left at home. One's 19. They got five other kids down to a four or five year old. And the older ones convinced the younger ones we birthed ourselves and we raised ourselves through the Big Bang and evolution. And when the parents come home, they're not our parents, they're imposters and you need to fight them with every ounce of your being. That's the Antichrist. That's Project Blue Beam. And when parents get home and find out that the older ones have convinced the younger ones that they birthed themselves and they raised themselves and conditioned them to try and attack the parents when they get back, how would you feel? That seems to be approximately what's happened here. Wait for the second gods. The first ones are the ones that are bad.
See, I described earlier about the parable of the moat and the beam, and they cleverly turned what was a metaphor into literal, and what was meant to be taken literally into metaphor. Oh, no, it's not talking about a beam in your eye. It's talking about a 4 by 4 sticking out of your face. And that's what I mean by those who have been indoctrinated with dogma and specific ideology are going to have the toughest time going through this. So if you haven't really been into religion and you don't know how to approach spirituality, but you still want to be a good person, just start and be honest. Say, show me how to be a good person. Forgive me. I know I'm not a good person. And I'm not sure which spirit or which angel or which devil or which alien or which government agency has uh, tapped into him and touched him, but show me the way to not get, uh, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. And if you want to serve the good God, he knows what's in your heart. And if you've just been paying lip service and going about your life in a self-serving way, <clears throat> he also knows what's in your heart. And I said before, a lot of groups will have like 0% graduation rate. But I don't even know if that's true. Maybe the lukewarmers that have just been playing lip service are the ones with 0% graduation rate. And it's the thugs and the criminals and the hardcore gangs that actually have a code of conduct to which they adhere strictly. Like the song, All My Friends Are Heathens, Take It Slow. Because in that world... You adhere to a strict principle and code of conduct and honor amongst thieves, or you pay the consequence, and you don't get a second chance. And in that world, there's probably a higher percentage rate of graduation of people that are going to come around real fast. Know that in the world they live, they serve the principled code of conduct. So, if I can receive a grace card, so can you. So can anybody. Because I grew up in that world, thinking I was like, you know, the hardest thing on earth and I was going to be a badass gangster or something. But lucky for me, I woke up to spirituality pretty early on and I cleaned out my closet and I did the personal inventory and I made amends to those who I hurt. And I started serving others around me and I started doing for others what I, they couldn't do for themselves. And I've done that ever since. And through a little bit of works and a lot of grace... God's helping ripen my unripened spots and removing my rotten areas. That's all you got to do is ask to be forgiven and shown and not be misled. And know that I'm not sure which God is the good God and the bad God because we are in the upside down right now and everything's been inverted. So those people that are attached to dogma are probably going to have the hardest time letting go of that. David Gray let go of your heart, let go of your head, and feel it now.